Welcome back to the Airborne Podcast. I'm your host, Ajit. That's Big Boy Braz with us. We got Thanos back on the podcast. The Raptors, the Raptors, the Raptors. What's new? They lose another game. It seems like a typical day in the office. As they drop this one to the Chicago Bulls, 122-113. The bright spot of the night was Chris Boucher, who went for 38 points, 19 rebounds, almost had a 40-20 for the game. And that's pretty much it. Pascal did spicy P things tonight. He had 27 points, but everyone else, yeah. I mean, no W. The bench was nowhere to be found. We were undermanned. No Larry, no Van Vliet, no Bambri because of suspension. Van Vliet also because of suspension and injury. And you got no Rodney Hood. You got no Paul Watson. And the rest of the guys didn't come to play tonight. And that was the story of the ball game. Braz, I'm going to start with you. Let's start on a positive note because we've been talking about the Raptors losing game after game after game. How do you feel about Chris Boucher's performance and do you feel like this was a fluke or do you feel like there's many more performances at this level to come? So before we get to the point, I just want to mention breaking news. McCaw got waived. <laughs> you know, it's kind of sad. My man went three years, three championships. Big ups to him. Good luck to him in the future. Back to your question. I think there is more to come for Chris Boucher. I think he's just developing. But like we've what we've been saying in this podcast for the past, I guess, three or four in a row, He's not even true five. He's a four, right? So the moment we get like um, Birch or like some some other center to fulfill that position, and you put him in the four, I think he would have more of an impact. Um, just because mm-hmm. I feel like people are bodying the shit out of him, right? But you know, today, you know, this guy this guy was doing amazing on the boards. Like there are plays where like you hustle back and you just like get get the offensive reward, offensive rebound, and then boom, dunk it. So you know, big ups to him. You know, he had a big game today. Appreciate him. Uh, one more note, one more point to you, to add to your Patrick McCaw thing. Uh, Patrick McCaw getting waived. I mean, it was inevitable. He wasn't able to stay healthy on the court. Feels like he hasn't been on the court forever. And you got to play a few games here and there. But for the most part, Nick Nurse, his favorite player, one of the only men to three-peat, even though it was on the same team. <laughs> um, he definitely three-peated back-to-back with the Golden State Warriors and then the Toronto Raptors. And his career has kind of been a downfall since, but it is what it is. Good luck to him. Hopefully he gets healthy. And sure. But, yeah, back to the game. I mean, boys, we just lost the Chicago Bulls. Right. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Vucevic, a guy that we were haunting for years, dropped 22.7 rebounds tonight. Zach Levine, he dropped about 22 points as well with 13 assists. And you had Daniel Tice come from Boston for absolutely nothing. Someone we could have possibly gotten in a trade for nothing. And he drops 14 points, 10 rebounds, gets a double-double. What I couldn't understand during this game, and I want Anujan to explain this, is was it just me or did I see Lori Markinen, Daniel Tice, and Nikola Vucevic all on the floor at the same time? Yeah, yeah. yeah so all of them on the floor, man. So all of them on the floor. But they were, they were doing their thing. Like, Lori Markinen was hitting threes. Um, Dan- uh, Daniel Tice was getting boards, getting lobs, and then Vucevic was literally just posting up, hitting post up, m- doing post up moves, you know, the like his his thing, you know. But yeah. the thing I wanted to see, the one the thing I wanted to talk about is, I mean, I honestly thought I I already knew we we're gonna lose the game because we we're down like what 15, 20 points in like yeah. what the second half or the first first half. But I saw Aaron Baines hit a <laughs> hit a three, and that shit like literally went to the other side of the rim, and I was like, "Yo, it's it's a wrap." I'm like, "Yo, like." Hey, Aaron, I thought you said Aaron Baines. I thought you said Aaron Baines. No, no, he didn't make a three. He didn't make a three. He he shot the ball, and it literally went to the other side. I'm like, it didn't go. It didn't hit the rim or anything. It just went to the other side of the rim, and just went down. The way you were setting that sentence up, I felt like. That you were no, 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 no. I thought you were gonna make. I thought you were gonna say Aaron Baines made a logo three. No, 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 no. Yo, I wish. Baines, I wish. Aaron Baines needs to sell a kidney in order to hit that, yo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, honestly, though, he wasn't the only one that did horrible in this game. A lot of the guys, Gary Trent yeah, Jr. Yeah, didn't sure. play. Yeah, Gary Trent was Gary Trent was horrible to do. 
Yeah, he didn't come to play. OG and, didn't do well uh, today either. OG still scoring double figures, but he wasn't himself. And yeah. Malachi Flynn was missing open layups like Pascal in the beginning of the season. And, I mean, the Raptors had opportunities to come back in this game, but, you know, Malachi Flynn hit that layup, made that layup. It would have continued the momentum in our favor, but he missed it. And then Zach Levine went in the other direction to hit that dagger three. Yeah, give credit to the thing, uh, Zach Levine, man. That guy hit a clutch-ass three. He was at least on his clutch, yo. He is a yeah, he he player, man. Like, he, he is, man. Imagine imagine if Minnesota actually kept him and traded um, Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah, they should have kept, they they should, was, they should have kept yeah. Levine and Trey Wiggins. Yeah, it would have been solid. 100%. Yeah, Jimmy, Zach Levine, and Carl Anthony Towns together? Yeah. Oh, wait, no, that wouldn't have happened because... Jimmy Butler is part of the trade to bring Zach Levine and Laurie Market into Chicago. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm saying like D'Lo, Zach Levine, and um, and but, um, Carl Anthony Towns. But if they didn't just do the trade for Jimmy Butler, they would have had a young core of Laurie Market and Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, and Zach Levine still. Yeah. 100%. It is what it is. But enough about the Minnesota Timberwolves because they haven't made the playoffs. I think they only made it once <laughs> in like 18, 18, 19 years. Yeah. Uh, can we talk about okay. the threes though, man? Like the threes were horrible today as well. Like, Yo, for was, both, was, both right. ends, both ends, Chicago and um and Toronto, like they're both horrible at the three. Dude, but, what they, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. No, one thing I want to also mention was that like like we would go on like droughts, man. And those droughts were what hurt us. Like you know, in the beginning of the game, we were doing amazing. Like 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 we were like I thought we were gonna win the game. I thought we were good. like the way we were playing, the way we start, we started off. We were, I think, we were like started like eight and zero or like ten and zero, something crazy. Like we yeah, were, yeah, yeah, from the first we quarter. Yeah. So I have my yeah. hopes up. I'm like, you know, yeah, easy win. Here we go, and then boom, here comes a drought. It just shows how much we miss yes. uh thing, Larry, Larry Levine. Yeah. I mean, Larry Van Bleet and uh, Ronnie Hood. Yo, in Powell, yeah. man, if we had Powell, we would like, like, I'm sure he would have just. No, uh, I'm not, I'm not giving up on Trent. For me, the yeah, if Trent, we have Powell. Yeah, 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 Powell for sure, yeah. Yeah, he... But, I mean, we could say that both teams shot horrible from beyond the arc, but, I mean, the Chicago Bulls shot 40% for the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They hit 12 threes out of 30 attempts, 40%. The Raptors only made 11 threes out of 34 attempts for 32%. But, I want to highlight Chris Boucher because I did not expect a game like that from him. No. I Yo, he not. played well. Yeah. really well. Yeah, he played really well. He stepped up tonight. Can somebody tell him to learn how to rebound like that on a regular basis? Because that's what we need. I he, think made Vucevic, he made Vucevic yeah. look like... Um, a rag right like, Yeah, exactly. Yeah, He made him look... Bro, he, actually think, looked like a, he actually looked like a solid five tonight. Yeah, I mean, Vucevic usually gets double-digit rebounds and he held him to seven rebounds. But I heard yeah. Pascal was making him, was putting him in a blender and, and going all out. Yeah, he was spinning your there were, tornadoes. Yeah, there were, there were a few plays where Siakam actually made tough shots. But there were also, like, another few plays that, like, I was just kind of questioning. I was like, why are you doing that? You know, like, you know when he rushes it too too quick? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, he's he, those are a few plays like that. And I'm just like, what is this guy doing? Like, you could have passed it to, like, there are there a few guys that are open. You could have passed it to them, but he didn't, he didn't do that. He just decided to go in and. Mess That's the up. thing. That's the thing. When he's feeling himself, like he gets too excited, and he doesn't think about like a better play. He yeah, just wants. He to... had no. Did he even have assist today? He didn't have a single assist tonight. No, you yeah. Right. There are so many plays. There are so many. Oh, he plays. had one. He had one. There are so many plays. Sorry, where like, Gay Trent or someone will be open, and like Siak when he's like, television, you know, head down and like spin, spin, spin. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, I truly don't think Gary Trent had a, like a solid open shot to make, like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. how a regular oh, three point shooter would get an open shot. I felt like Gary Trent didn't have the opportunity, which is why he struggled tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, like uh, six points, one is one rebound, one assist isn't enough. Two of 14 shooting, it's not really solid. Like, if you're getting 14 shots, you gotta, you gotta at least make a few yeah, of those shots, yeah. you know? Right. Yeah. I want to. I mean, I want to name some of the top players for the Raptors since there weren't that many. Yeah, Chris Boucher. Obviously, we talked about him. Can we just can we just can we just give uh, Boucher the star? Hundred percent. Yeah, like yeah. that guy already deserves it. 
Yeah, and for Chris Boucher for the night against the Chicago Bulls in 36 minutes, had 38 points, 19 rebounds, one assist, 14 to 24 from the field, seven of eight from the free throw line, three of seven from the three point line, one steal, one block, and only one turnover. Definitely deserves the star player of the game tonight. Right. Yeah. Um, next best player was Pascal Siakam in 38 minutes at 27 points, eight rebounds and assist. 10 of 17 from the field, six of seven from the free throw line, one of two from the three point line. No steals, but three blocks. And the next double digit score was OG Ananobi in 40 minutes at 13 points, four rebounds, six assists. For five of 17 from the field, one of two from the free throw line, two of eight from the three point line, with three steals, no blocks. And everyone else, all these guys are going to be on the bus tonight. Malachi Flynn. Yeah. Yo, before you trend, go, I want to point about Malachi Flynn. Like, big ups to him, you know, he's stepping up or he's filling the shoes for Fred, for Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry. So he's yeah, a point he outside his comfort zone of being a starter. You know, like, it's not easy, you know, being a starter in the league, you know, so big ups yeah, to him. I can, but like, I, can, I, can see how, I can see how difficult it is for him to actually for sure. lead a team. No, you, can see it. you can see it with the way he's playing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He was missing, like, he was missing easy shots. Even at the end, yeah. we were down by, like, I think six or something. Yo, if he if he hit those shots, yo, there's two shots in a row he missed. That if we hit, we would, it would have been a close game. But hey, it is what it is. He hit a three. He hit a three in the fourth. Where, yeah, like, I yeah, didn't after. expect him to shoot a three. Yeah, I didn't expect this, him to shoot a three like that. He just popped it and made it. There's these rookie mistakes that they're gonna have, and yeah, I mean, Malik sure, yeah. gonna go through. And you know, it's growing pains right now. But if it pays off in the future, we're not gonna complain about it, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure, hundred yeah. percent. I mean, look at it in, the, in this perspective. On this perspective, like Pascal Siakam and Fred VanVleet came into the league at the same time in 2016. One guy was undrafted. One guy was late first round pick. Went to the G League. We didn't think they were going to become any good player for us. Yeah. All of a sudden, they become some of the main pieces for us that actually won that helped win the championship in 2019. Yeah. Pascal breaking Draymond Green's back to hit that final little uh, Euro step floater. Yeah. And Fred Van Lee, without those clutch three pointers in the fourth quarter, yeah, it's good. Yeah, we would have we, we sure. never had a chance. Yeah, we would have never had a chance to win. He was hitting unbelievable shots on everybody. Yeah, for yeah. sure. He's like, he's like, Quinn could get over here. Demarcus Cousins, get over here. Whoever it was, it didn't matter. Norman that Powell, was prime, too. That was prime Siakam right there. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, prime <laughs> Siakam when Kawhi Leonard, Fred Van Vliet, and Kyle Lowry all going off in the same game. Pascal's work is light work. Yeah. Okay. Shout out to him. He did have 32 points in that first game, one again in the finals for us. So, Prime Siakam for sure. Malachi Flynn in 35 minutes at nine points, three rebounds, eight assists, three of 11 from the field, no free throw attempts, three of seven from the three point line, two steals, no blocks. Damn, he hit three threes. Shout out, shout out to him. Yeah, he didn't, Gary Trent, he didn't do that, but. Gary Trent Jr. in 38 minutes at six points, one rebound, one assist. Two of 14 from the field? My God. Yeah, it's not enough. Yeah, two of 14 from the field, one of one from the free throw line, and one of seven from the three-point line. And that's all she wrote. And you know, you know, Baines, Watanabe, Stanley Johnson, you know how they do. Our real homies, right? Put them all on the yeah. bus. Put them all on the coach bus, yo. Put them all on the fucking bus. So they're the VIPs on the bus. I just want to put this out there just to clarify with everyone, make sure we all agree. Chris Boucher, star player of the game. Undo. And and people we're throwing under the bus tonight is Gary Trent Jr., Malachi Flynn, Aaron Baines, Watanabe, Stanley Johnson. Put all of those guys. 100%. Ian Thompson, Fred Van Lee on that shit, but just for not <laughs> helping us. <laughs> for the Chicago Bulls, Nikola Vucevic in 31 minutes at 22.7 rebounds, four assists. 9 of 19 from the field, 1 of 1 from the free throw line, 3 of 6 from the three-point line with the steal. Zach Levine, 37 minutes at 22 points, 6 rebounds, 13 assists, 8 of 16 from the field, 4 of 5 from the free throw line, 2 of 8 from the three-point line, 3 steals and a block. And then you had Daniel Tice, 26 minutes at 14 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists, 6 of 9 from the field, 2 of 3 from the free throw line. He had one three-point attempt. He missed it. No steals, no blocks. Mark and then your favorite boy, Bravine. 18 minutes at 18 points. Yo, he came off the bench today, I think, right? Yeah, he's been coming off the bench. Yeah. 
the side. I think he might lead Chicago still. If he doesn't get yeah. the starting role, probably. But in 18 minutes, he had 18 points, three rebounds, no assists, eight of 10 from the field, 80% field goal shooting. Damn. No free throw attempts, two or four from three point line, and no defensive stats, which means no steals, no blocks. Kobe White in 26 minutes scored 15 points, three rebounds, and assist. Five of 10 from the field, two of two from the free throw line, three of seven from the three point line, no steals, no blocks. And Thaddeus Young, the bet. Credit with the triple double in 23 minutes, 11 points, nine rebounds, six assists, four of 11 from the field, three of three from the free throw line. No, no three point attempts, no defensive stats, which means no steals, no blocks. And yeah, that's it. Sadoransky, 29 minutes, nine points, two rebounds, seven assists, four or five from the field, no free throw attempts, one or two from the three point line, no steals, no blocks. And the rookie, Patrick Williams, 31 minutes, 11 points, seven rebounds, one assist. Three to seven from the field, four four from the free throw line, one of two from the three point line, one steal, one block. For the most part, they had a collective effort, and they that's why they won this ball game. They all did so well at the in the first three quarters that they had enough to handle our run at the end and still be able to pull away. For sure, I feel like um, I feel like once we get Larry Van Bleed and the the new additions, I feel like we can get a couple a few wins. Mm-hmm. I think, I think we can make it to the play in tournament if uh, if we stay healthy. Yeah, but the only problem is right now where our de- defense isn't holding up. That's the problem. We're undermanned yeah. and we're allowing teams to sh- score 30 points in every quarter basically. Where I feel like that I feel like that'll be um I feel like that'll be uh, erased as soon as those guys come in. Ken Birch is a guy that we get rebounded. We we mentioned it before, like the you remember that other video we had about the trades. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Ken Birch isn't someone I really expected us to sign, but I mean, like, I've seen some of his highlights. He's he, he's pretty solid. Yeah, Not he's pretty quick, Joe. And yeah. under Nick Nurse, it might, help, it might help him get ready for the Olympics. Yeah, he's Canadian, too. So, like, yeah. he's obviously going to, he's going to have, obviously have, like, some sort of uh, boost, right, within him. He's like, going to play playing under for, Nick Nurse, right? And team yeah, Canada, playing, for, playing for his home team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Nick Nurse is coaching Team Canada and Cambridge and Chris Boucher, both Canadians out of Montreal, going to be teammates yeah. eventually right now in a couple of days. Because yeah, Cambridge sure. is he's getting weighed from Orlando and getting signed by the Raptors. At least that's where he's yeah. going to choose to go. That's where he's choosing to go. I did want to talk about the main stats for the team. Yeah. The Raptors shot 42 of 97 for the field. 42 of 97 from the field for 43%. And allowed Chicago to shoot 54%, 47 of 87 from the field. I mentioned the three-point shooting. Chicago shot 12 or made 12 threes out of 30 attempts for 40% from, from beyond the arc. And Toronto Raptors only made 11 threes out of 34 attempts for 32%. Free throws, we got four more free throw attempts than the Chicago Bulls. We shot 18 of 22 from the line for 82%. And Chicago shot 16 of 18 for 89%. Rebounding. Wasn't much of a problem because Chris Boucher was a beast tonight. Word. We were still a minus eight tonight. Chicago had 49. We had 41 rebounds. Offensive rebounds, we were plus three tonight, actually. We were we had 15. They had 12, so we were plus three. Yeah. Assists, um, assists, we had 19. They had 35. We were minus 16. With the steals, we had 10 steals. They had five. We were plus five. Blocks, we had five. They had three. We were plus two. Turnovers, we only had 10. We've been taking care of the ball so well, but we're not – Converting these games executing into wins. properly. Say that yeah. again? We're not executing properly. Yeah, exactly. And we had 10 turnovers. They had 16, so we're plus six. Points in the paint, they had 64 points. We had 56, so they're plus eight. Second chance points, we actually won that tonight. We had 19, they had nine, so we're plus 10. Fast break, we had 11. Fast break points, they had nine, so plus two. And points off turnovers, we had 19, they had 12. We're plus seven. Biggest lead for us was nine tonight. Biggest lead for the Chicago Bulls was 22. We had 20 personal fouls. They had 16, so they were plus four. So we had four more fouls than they did. Yeah. And that's all she wrote. Second chance points was kind of surprising to me, but, like, considering the fact that Boucher kept getting boards, it's not really, but, like, um, like if you really, like, second chance points, if, you, if we're getting that many second chance points, like you'd really think that we're we'd probably win the game, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we should have, but yeah. the thing is, that's the thing though. Like all these things would translate to wins if our defense was just on point, but we don't have the defenders right now because everyone's injured. 
Yeah. And we have super beans to stand in like Statue of Liberty also. <laughs> what else do you expect? Yeah, well, sure. Hopefully, hopefully with the addition of Ken Bridge taking the starting role, giving Boucher that option to come off the bench, playing his original position at the four, I feel like that will help this team. And then when we get Van Vliet, Larry back, it'll push back all the other guys to their original roles so that the pressure is not there. And maybe our bench grows from this, right? Because they're getting those valuable minutes right now yeah, and getting that sure. confidence. And I feel like considering the fact that Malachi Flynn got his opportunity, I think I feel I strongly think that he would uh, he would flourish from from like just playing on the bench, right? No, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. He's got he's got the confidence now because he's got the minutes. I mean, he might look back at everyone when when everyone comes back because he won't get the same amount of minutes. Yeah, yeah. But right now, right now he's getting experience, getting live minutes in crucial games. Yeah, if he's if he's doing this under pressure, uh, with no pressure, uh, the sky's the limit for him. I feel like you could do it. Up. Yeah, he's been thir- he's been, he's been getting thirty plus minutes and and getting important minutes in crucial games. So he's definitely getting the confidence. You have any final thoughts? No, I'm good. I'm just like I'm just frustrated with the way we're playing. But hey, let's see let's see how it goes, man. Right? Like, if it was competitive, we wouldn't be complaining. But yeah. you know, these teams. It's because we're so accustomed to seeing us beat these teams over and over and over again. To see yeah, these teams yeah. come back and whoop our ass now, it's kind of frustrating. Obviously, I understand right. that. No, but also, but it's also the fact that we we have so many injuries, right? Like, I feel like if we had Larry Van Vliet and Rodney Hood on our team, and Ken Birch, I feel I, I strongly believe that we would have beat this team. This this season, I I would want to believe you if this was any other season, but this season's been an up and down year for us. I don't even know if that would it's be so true. confusing. Like you don't, right. I don't even know how to feel about the season. It's not a it's not a normal season. It's an abnormal season, and we're mm-hmm. just gonna have to kind of ride the the Leviathan wave. It's bipolar, man. <laughs> bipolar. Trust me. I to say um, you want to, but you know it is what it is. For sure. Any final thoughts about the Chicago Bulls game? Before we finally move on to the Cleveland we have a game, hard schedule ahead of us. I'm just hoping. I'm just hoping we get some sort of um, somebody like Cam Birch, like some sort of some sort of player, Larry Van Vliet or Cam Birch or Rodney Hood, one of those guys, because those one of those guys could help us out. You know, it's official, yeah. right? Here. Yeah, it's official. Yeah, yeah, Cam Birch is most likely coming to to the Raptors. Yeah, he's he's waved right now. He's just he's just waiting. But I'm more than likely that he's he's with the Raptors. He just needs to sign it officially. I also want to see Freddie, the the news, the the guy that got signed for ten days. Mm-hmm. I want to see what he can do too. Like I don't want him to be one of those guys that sit on the bench and do nothing. You know, like yeah. I, I want to see these guys play like from the G League because these guys deserve deserve a chance to like actually showcase their skills. You know, if Alizé Johnson doesn't get another contract, I want Masai to give him the ten day contract. Yeah, yeah, bro, I, you know, that guy's sick, man. We should have taken. Yeah, sorry, No, no, I'm just saying we should give that guy a chance, man. Like that was, like that was sick. We had him on a nine to five roster. He was doing well. Then he went and played for Brooklyn on a day when no one else was playing, and the man beasted out. And then they signed it, signed into another ten day contract. He's just sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Where you know? on the Nets? Yeah, the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, Alizé Johnson. He kind of looks like Jimmy Butler. Oh, I know, I know, I know that's how. Yeah. yeah. He's like a big forward, and he gets he can rebound the hell out of. Him. We had him on a nine to five though, right? I remember. Yeah, 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 that's, what yeah, yeah. that's what he's saying. Yeah, that's what he's saying. He can rebound the ball, hell out of the ball. Another day at the office with another Raptors loss. That's gonna do it for this podcast. Appreciate everyone for tuning in. It's been exhausting, but keep on joining us for this ride because eventually there's gonna be a turnaround where all these guys, all these bandwagon Raptor fans, will come around again when we start winning bare ball games. But we do have a tough back-to-back, not in terms of the teams. We've played a lot of games this week, and we're playing Cleveland on Saturday. And Sunday, we're playing the New York Knicks. Hmm. And right now, it kind of looks weird because it says it's postponed, but we'll see. We'll find out more about it. Yeah. If you haven't liked the video, make sure you like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to it. What are y'all waiting for? Y'all slacking, bro. And we'll be back with the post-game podcast for the Cleveland game, if it's not postponed, or the New York Knicks game. Until then, stay blessed, stay woke, and please stay safe. Peace.